and 7. So there are total 7 structural isomers. Now let's look at the stereoisomers in this case. So stereoisomers, so we can have, uh, so for the first one, no carbon-carbon double bond, no chiral center, so zero, is zero stereoisomers. For the second one, again, zero stereoisomers. For the third one, uh, there is the no carbon-carbon double bond, so no geometric isomers. However, if you look at the third carbon atom, it is a chiral center. So since the th third carbon atom is a chiral center, it will exist as two optical isomers. So this will be into two. Then uh, even this isomer, the second carbon atom is a, a chiral center. So again, two optical isomers. But no geometric isomers because no carbon-carbon double bond. Then this one, no, no stereo isomers because uh, no optical or geometric isomers in this case because no chiral center or no carbon-carbon double bond. Then this one again, the second carbon atom if you look at it, it has, uh, it is a chiral center so this will exist as two. And the last one, it does not have any chiral centers nor carbon-carbon double bond so it will exist as a single isomer. So now when we count the total number of structural and stereo isomers, it will be 1, 2, 3 and 4, 5 and 6, 7, 8 and 9 and 10. So there will be 10 total structural plus stereo isomers for this compound. So now we know isomerism in carboxylic acids as well. So let's move forward. So the formation of carboxylic acids. Now as you have, as you have seen, an aldehyde, it oxidizes further after so when an alcohol uh, oxidizes it forms an aldehyde and then this aldehyde it oxidizes further to form a carboxylic acid so you can see that oxidation of aldehydes gives give us the carboxylic acid so from ethanol we get ethanoic acid now oxidation of primary alcohols so direct oxidation of primary alcohols without removing the aldehyde again will give us the carboxylic acid because you know that first this alcohol will form the aldehyde then the alcohol will, uh, then the aldehyde will further oxidize to the, al to the carboxylic acid if it is heated under reflux and not distilled off. So, uh, then hydrolysis of nitriles. So, the CN group is called the nitrile group. So, we name this nitrile as, uh, because it has two carbon atoms, we name this as ethane nitrile. So, ethane, ethane nitrile. So the number of carbon atoms and then the alkane name followed by nitrile. If we have CH3, if we had CH3, CH2, CN, then it would have been propane nitrile because three carbon atoms, so propane and then nitrile. Propane nitrile. Okay, I'm sorry about the handwriting here. I'll just write it properly. propane nitrile. So we can have butane nitrile and so on. So upon hydrolyzing these nitriles, so the conditions for hydrolysis are aqueous HCl and heat and upon hydrolyzing this nitrile we get the carboxylic acid along with ammonium chloride. So, uh, so remember this ammonium chloride and carboxylic acid. Now uh, this is the acid hydrolysis of, ni of nitriles. So the acid nitrolysis of uh, acid hydrolysis of nitriles will give us the carboxylic acid however if we carry out the alkaline hydrolysis of nitriles then we do not get the carboxylic acid so remember it's always acidic hydrolysis not alkaline hydrolysis so in the case of alkaline hydrolysis it will be this giving us CH3CO2 However, this will be a negative ion, it will be bonded to an Na plus ion. So this will be an ionic compound, this will not be the carboxylic acid, instead it will be sodium ethanoate, because this is the ethanoate ion, so sodium ethanoate, and then uh, NH4Cl, so, uh, so instead of NH4Cl, we will get NH, we will get N, uh, NH4OH actually. NH4OH so yes this is not balanced but uh, let me just see into this look into this 
I think uh, that we, yeah, we have to add a water actually. So that was the problem over here. Uh, we, we were